was a fiance, father, and a son. Officer Jamal Mitchell is also being hailed as a hero. The Minneapolis Police Department is calling Mitchell one of its finest. Mitchell died in the line of duty Thursday. He lived in Maple Grove. A news release says the Minneapolis Police Department was responding to a shooting at an apartment building when Mitchell was killed in a gunfight. He died of his injuries at the hospital. State Senator Warren Limmer said in a statement that, quote, his death was made even more senseless as he was ambushed trying to help someone who was injured. Limmer, who represents Maple Grove where Mitchell lived, also asked the community to join him in offering condolences to Mitchell's loved ones. Now to a closer look at juvenile offenders and what the Hennepin County Sheriff believes needs to happen. Hennepin County Sheriff Dewana Witt says juvenile crime is a huge challenge. She says the lack of consequences for teen offenders is one reason why. I think anybody who's a parent would say that, okay, if there's not immediate consequences for our kids, what's the deterrent for them to stop? Just this past week, Brooklyn Park Police dealt with large gatherings of youth that resulted in shots fired. In speaking with the Plymouth City Council this week, Sheriff Witt also said the closure of Hennepin County Home School in Minnetonka is also an issue. It once housed the area's most violent youth offenders. Witt also says offenders are also intentionally trying to irk police. We know that we've seen vehicles driving towards uh, marked law enforcement cars trying to antagonize them to chase. We just had a chase today. Um, I shouldn't say we, but it started with Robbinsdale. It ended in Minneapolis. And here we are talking about multiple juveniles again. The immediate consequence has to be a must. That Robbinsdale case involved a 15-year-old in a stolen vehicle. The teen was spotted in Robbinsdale and crashed in Minneapolis. Charges in the case were pending. In other news, the Crystal Police Department says residents should look out for a scam that targets potential home renters. According to Crystal Police, scammers will post a home for rent online. However, those scammers don't actually own the home or have the right to offer it for rent. The scammers will then ask a potential renter to pay the rent or make a deposit with gift cards. The scammers then steal the gift cards. Crystal Deputy Police Chief Brian Hubbard says these types of scams can be difficult to investigate. But certainly if someone's looking for a property and the request is that you receive payment in gift card, that really should be a red flag for people that that's not how any legitimate property owner is going to do business. Renters can check with the city to see if a property is licensed for rent and who owns it. Plymouth residents will have more access to nature thanks to the city's investment in a new $2 million park. The City Council approved a bid to build the new Schmidt Woods Park. The park has a focus on nature with native plantings and an outdoor classroom. The playground surface will be fully ADA accessible and that's a first for Plymouth. There's also a designated area to set up hammocks without damaging trees. Construction on the park starts this summer. It should wrap up before the end of the year. Meanwhile, the City of Plymouth has a plan to help businesses cope with construction in its city center. Plymouth Boulevard construction started this month as part of a major initiative to boost city center development. The project will cause detours and access challenges. So to help businesses, the city started what it calls a passport program. It allows shoppers to collect stamps from businesses they visit. Once you've collected eight stamps, you can enter into a prize drawing. If you collect 12 or more, you can enter into another. Some of the participating businesses will have special promotions too. Organizers hope this will keep shoppers local. The passport program starts on Saturday and you can pick up a passport at any participating business. We'll post a full list at ccxmedia.org. A place of worship in Maple Grove is slated for a significant expansion. The Hindu Society of Minnesota is planning a 17,000 square foot expansion. This new space would focus on education and culture. It includes a 500 person gathering space and also included are classrooms, a library, and an art gallery. The Maple Grove Planning Commission recommended the project for approval. The City Council will vote on the project at its next meeting. A Champlain Park High School senior received a nice financial boost for college as a reward for her volunteer efforts. You take a great sense of pride in that and the fact that you found you know, a connection with somebody and being able to help them with something that really didn't take much effort for you at all. And it means a world of difference to somebody else because of what it gave them. 
Champlain Park senior Grace Olalie spent the last two years providing volunteer technical support to residents of St. Therese at Oxbow Lake in Brooklyn Park. Grace is one of two recipients of the St. Therese Youth Volunteer Scholarship, which they award annually to youth volunteers who enrich the lives of seniors. The $2,000 scholarship will help Grace pay for her education at the University of Minnesota in the fall. Obviously, college is very expensive. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, uh, it's not something that I think is easily accessible for a lot of people, but just to be able to have that opportunity and that gift, it means a lot. Grace says she plans to major in human physiology and then go on to med school. A reminder that the Celebrate Brooklyn Park Tater Days Parade is on Saturday. As we go to break, we'll give you a ride to look at scenes from last year's parade. In the past two seasons, the West Lutheran softball team has come up a game short of a state tournament appearance. The Warriors were back in the section final again this year and were hoping to win their first ever section title. Ches Moots has the highlights. West Lutheran in the driver's seat just needing one win to earn the 4A title. Bram would need to win two games. Bottom one, Marissa Tussler, great cut and swing. Ball goes back to right field over the head of Corey Olson. Eleanor Rolf slides home, Warriors tack on two in the opening frame. Jump to the top of the third, Bombers trying to chip away at the lead. Aaron Zimple fly out to right field, but Olson was on third. She takes up and puts Bram on the board. In the bottom of the third, Warriors keep the bats hot. It's Tussler again to right field. Her RBI triple goes all the way to the corner. West Lutheran scores two more in the third. The Bombers scored another in the top of the fourth, but West Lou comes right back in the fifth. Maddie Tussler, delayed swing, ball ends up in shallow left field. The younger Tussler, Marissa, slides in for another run. Next batter, Natalie Mengus, deep drive to center field, well hit ball, heads for the wall. Mengus reaches the second on a two run double. Warriors score four runs in the fifth. Bram stayed within striking distance. Ayla Anderson, low swing, shot to right, good for an RBI sack fly. Last chance in the seventh, but Rolf went the distance in the circle. She gets a strikeout to end the game. West Lutheran wins their first ever section title and is heading to the Class A state tournament. The past two years we've been here and watched the other team do that same thing. And it's just, we know we were so close and to finally get it is just a huge relief. And it's just so exciting. I know it's crazy to me. Like our team out there is all freshmen, eighth graders, sophomores. Like I'm the only senior out there. It's kind of crazy. Like I don't know the younger kids just led us today and it was kind of good. I don't know, it was amazing. In Roseville, Chaz Moots, CCX Sports. In Section 5-4A softball, Champlain Park and Rogers advance to the final round with Rogers needing one win for the title. Jay Wilcox has highlights. Champlain Park aiming for its first trip to state as they face Rogers in the Section 5-4A softball final. Rogers needing one win for the title, Champlain Park needs two. It's a pitcher's duel early. Freshman Ava Abrahamson gets out of a jam with a strikeout for the Rebels in the first inning. Eighth grader Annabelle Waldock is sharp for Rogers. She strikes out six in the first three innings as the pitchers match zeros on the scoreboard. Rogers breaks through in the fifth though as Cammy Messer tags one to deep left. It's off the fence and it scores a pair of runs. A big double for Messer. They add another on a ground out and the Royals lead it three to nothing. And Waldock and her defense do the rest as Rogers returns to the state tournament for the first time since 2005 with a 3 0 shutout of Champlain Park. Jay Wilcox, CCX Sports. 
Maple Grove's girls golf team is one of the state's best. They dominated at the Section 5-3A tournament. Jay Wilcox has highlights. Maple Grove's Amelia Morton tees off in round two at Lynx at North Fork. The Crimson with a huge lead as a team. Allie Blomberg of Park Center sinks a nice putt for par on the 15th hole. She cards an 80 on day two and places ninth to qualify for state. It's all Maple Grove at the top of the leaderboard. Senior Morton sinks the birdie putt on 10 on her way to a two-day 146 as she wins the section title by two strokes. Her freshman teammate Peyton Anderson for par here on number eight is second with rounds of 75 and 73. Third also goes to the Crimson. McKenna Hogan's putt just curls around the cup on 15. She taps in and scores a 76, finishing five shots back of Anderson. Maple Grove's Emerson Soderberg is part of a group that ties for fifth place in the tournament, along with her teammate and fellow freshman Annika Hendrickson. Maple Grove cruises to the team title with a 599 total, 93 shots better than runner-up Rogers. Jay Wilcox, CCX Sports. Find more prep sports games and highlights at ccxmedia.org and follow us on social media.